The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have not been paying attention. When you were just talking to me Do you think that you could repeat the question? And I listen more attentively There must have been something In all of that nothing That wasn't quite so easy to It's gonna take me a minute today Right out of the gate. I did an hour of prep for today's show, and I'm still not ready. It's ridiculous. All right. Phone is off. Everybody's ready. You guys out there ready? Need another minute? Thank you for the coffee, Chrissy, too. You're welcome. It's driving me out of my mind. I feel so bad we can't go to see Melvin Taylor on the 26th. Aww. All right, we'll start the show and then we'll chat about it. Uh, Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, at top two guys smoke shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. I was looking at the calendar yesterday and I went, oh my God, in December we're going to be celebrating our fifth anniversary here. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. Um, all right, so what did I, oh, so Melvin Taylor is going to be playing at Toad in Cambridge on the 26th. And I, as soon as he told me, I said, okay, we're in. And I called all my people and said, on the 26th, we're going to go to Toad in Cambridge. We'll make it a good night. I'll even buy everybody's first drink. And then I got in the mail yesterday a thing from the Lawrence High Alumni Association that scholarship night is, of course, May 26th. Uh-huh. So I guess we can't go to Melvin Taylor. But he said that if he does well, he said this is kind of a test run for him because he hasn't been feeling well. If he does well that night and he thinks he can handle it, then he'll book more shows. So hopefully uh-huh. we will be able to see him again. I want to thank McLennan Real Estate Century 21, AFC Urgent Care. We love Lisa and everybody over there. EIS Investigation and Gun Training. They also do security too. So if you, if you have a business and you need security or if you have uh, something where you need security for, you should call EIS Investigation and Gun Training. Borelli's Deli. I actually made a decision on my way to the show today. I said every single week we should, we should Skype in Don Smiriglio from Borelli's Deli and have him uh, show us what his uh, specials are for the, for the week. Mm. Right, because I think that would drive a lot. If, he, if you guys could see how good the sausage looks, it's amazing. Um, Tomo and Shaken Seafood are at Tomo's again last night. I swear to God, I spend more time there than I do at Taco Bell. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, Clear Path for Veterans New England, a free shout out for Sullivan Insurance. And of course, Lazy River Products in Drake. And I keep promising I'm going to get there, but I, I, I absolutely am going to be there this weekend. Take some pictures. We'll do another story about those guys. Uh, cannabis uh, retail in Drake. It. And a free shout-out to Sebastian House of Toys in Haverhill. Okay, big show today. Uh, we have no guest, but there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we get to the big topic. Uh, let's pull up that first picture. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting. If, if you work with the homeless or if you've, if you've ever dealt with the homeless, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Sometimes not so rewarding. Sometimes it is. Um, But TMF is a group of kids, and I talk about them all the time. They feed the homeless every Wednesday night. They set up this big dinner. 
And by the way, it's not just a dinner. It's not just food. They don't just, they're not, they're not Korunum. They're not St. Patrick's Church. They don't just give them food and throw them the hell out. Um, they give them uh, blankets and clothes and hand warmers, gloves, scarves, whatever it is that they need. Tewksbury Detox always comes. There's a couple of other detoxes that come. If someone wants to get clean, we can take them right from the lot. We can put them into, uh, we can get them an intake at Tewksbury Detox and, and get them on the path to being off the streets and no longer addicted. So last night was really a very interesting night for TMF. They set up their dinner for the homeless and the Lawrence police showed up. Not to arrest anybody, not because anybody was doing anything wrong. They showed up because they were sponsoring the night. So a bunch of Lawrence cops show up at the Buckley garage last night. They showed up with a bunch of a couple of grills and hot dogs and hamburgers and cooked and fed the homeless. And it was very interesting because at the very beginning of the night, there were a bunch of people that were coming into the bus station, saw all the cops, and left. Mm -hmm. And so like about 15, 20 minutes into the night, we're all looking around. There's no homeless people. It's all volunteers and cops. And we were like, damn, maybe we should have the cops not wear their uniforms because, you know, maybe you might scare off some of the homeless people, right? But within an hour... Most of them had kind of circled the block and kind of come back and watched from a distance and saw that, like, nobody was getting arrested. This wasn't a thing where the cops were there to, to do their jobs as, as cops to arrest anybody, but they were there actually serving food. And a couple of them came over to me at the end of the night, because most of them actually did end up coming in. We lost a few, but most of them did come. And I had a couple of them come, come over and go, you know, see that guy over there? He's arrested me three times, and now he's serving me hamburgers. How crazy is that? Mm-hmm. And I sat there and I thought, isn't this a great thing? where you've got a population that's only used to dealing with the police when it's a negative thing, when the cops are locking them up or giving them Narcan, bringing them back to life from their addiction, whatever it is, it's usually a negative experience when they're dealing with the Lawrence cops. And the same thing with the Lawrence cops. When they're dealing with the homeless, generally they're dealing with the homeless because they broke into somebody's car or they're doing Narcan on them or there's some negative interaction, a fight, something going on in the streets. So here we had, for the first time that I've seen, the Lawrence police... And, the, and I want to thank John McMillan from the Lawrence Police Patrolman Association, a tremendous guy, a great cop, and somebody who really cares about the community. Um, you know, to see the Lawrence cops come and serve hamburgers and hot dogs to people that they were probably arrested yesterday uh, was, was really amazing. And I, I, I sat there and I, I tried to take all of this in thinking, you know, all the things that police departments do to try and um, help community policing and, and help their reputation within the community – you know, like I know that the chief went out and bought like an ice cream truck and they get the ice cream truck, goes to the Arlington neighborhood, gives free ice cream to kids and stuff. But I think something like this actually has far more long lasting positive effects on a community than anything like that. Going to, you know, the, the police chief goes to ribbon cuttings and stuff like that. But something like this, this is something that I think has long term, long lasting effects. And, um, and so I just wanted to shout out to uh, TMF for allowing the cops to come and do it because there was some conversation about, you know, do we let the cops do this? Will it scare everybody away? There were a couple of people last night that as they were leaving said, geez, I've got warrants and that guy didn't even know. Like they thought it was funny, but that's not why the cops were there. And, you know, it was, it was kind of like, like, it was almost like the bash. It was like an amnesty zone, mm-hmm. right? Where you come in, no one's going to arrest you. No one's going to hassle you, ask you for your ID. Just take a sandwich and eat. And I've been saying that for so long. Like instead of having meetings about meetings about how you can help the homeless or the addicted, instead of having meetings and meetings about how you can improve the police department's reputation in the community, how about just go out and give people a sandwich? And that's what they did last night. And so I thought it was a really tremendous thing. Here's a picture that we have uh, up um, on, this, on the screen here. He, these are, by the way, the guys you're seeing in that picture aren't even Lawrence cops yet. Those are kids that are in the academy. So what the union did is they grabbed a bunch of academy kids so that before they even hit the streets, they've already had interactions with the homeless. That is a tra- – if, if the newspaper – if the Valley Peach was going out next week instead of this, it coming out this week, it's already out, that would have been my lead story. And, and I would have interviewed all of them and we would have done a big story on that. That's huge. Four, five, and seven should pick up on that and do something. The Boston Globe should do something. If every community did that, if Lowell did that, if Haverhill did that, had the police go out and feed the homeless, don't arrest them, just go out and service them, find out if they need clothing or hand warmers or blankets or whatever it is that they need, and help them, then the next time you're going patrolling through a neighborhood and you're looking for somebody, the homeless guy might know where he is and he might come over and tell you. 
You know, if you're if you're out there and you're and you're doing something public service wise as a cop, it's a lot easier to have the homeless on your side than to have them working against you. Believe me, I I, I, I can tell you firsthand. So I want to thank the Lawrence Police. I want to thank TMF. I also want to thank I think it's uh, Assembly House of God in Haverhill, Mark Rivera, who was also there last night. And I don't thank them enough. They actually come like every week and and help out. And last night they actually helped to sponsor some of the food. Somebody please inbox me and let me know where the chicken from last night came from because I'm going there like all weekend if I can. The chicken was, it was better than any chicken I've had anywhere like in a long time. So wherever wherever you guys catered the chicken from, please let me know because it was great. All right. Now, um, the Valley Patriot is out. It's on the streets in most communities. We still haven't hit Boxford, Groveland, uh, Haverhill area yet, but we will do that uh, by this weekend. I'm getting a shit ton of mail. Uh, on a story that we did in this edition of the Valley Patriot. And it's only been out two days. Really, it's only been out one day. We posted it online Tuesday, and we started really delivering it yesterday. And the story that we wrote, we, we called and contacted candidates in all the different local races and included governor and asked them, now that Roe v. Wade may be getting turned over, where do you stand on the issue? And specifically, and I asked every candidate specifically, do you favor any restrictions on abortion? Because the real issue is not whether you're for abortion or not. That's what the media wants you to think. That's what the politicians want you to think. They want this extreme or this extreme. 90-something percent of the country is somewhere in the middle. The vast majority, well over 70 percent of Americans, believe there should be some restriction on abortion. Whether it's they're against late-term abortions, or they're against abortions for sex selection, or they're against abortion for birth control. And so we called uh, or contacted all the candidates, uh, asked them what they thought about it, and I'm going to go through them today because I thought this was really interesting. Regardless of where you stand on abortion, you're for it, you're against it, you're for it with some restrictions, you're against it with some restrictions, I thought it would be really helpful for you guys with the state elections coming up to just go through each candidate and tell you where they stand on this issue because it's going to be a huge issue. And the... um, I, am, I, am I breathing too hard, or is it just that this is too loud? Okay, I'm just hearing myself breathe so much. <coughs> so what I thought would be really helpful, no matter where you stand on the issue, is just tell you where they stand. Now, this is going to be a little tough, because as we compiled 11 candidates and where they stand on the issues, most of them didn't really answer the question. Most of them gave me talking points and platitudes. Most of them gave me bullshit. Most of them gave me, it's a woman's right to choose. Okay, but that really doesn't answer the question. I favor a woman, abortion's a human right. But that still doesn't answer the question. Because the question is not going to be, if Roe versus Wade gets overturned, the the question before the voters is not going to be, should there be abortions or not? That's never going to be on a ballot. It's never going to come before any state legislature. It's never going to come before Congress. What will come before the voters, the legislature, and Congress is, what kind, if any, should there be, what kind, if any, restrictions should there be on abortion? You're going to be really surprised by some of these. I was very surprised by some of these, but it was very educational. So, I, again, I thought I would, I would share it with you guys because, well, because we care here at Paying Attention. Jeff Deal is a candidate for um, governor. He ran against Elizabeth Warren for a state represent for a state, uh, no, not for state. He ran against Elizabeth Warren for U.S. Senate. The cigarette will slow me down and I won't talk so fast. Thank you. Um, He is, by the way, the only of everyone we interviewed and everybody that we talked to, he is the only pro-life candidate. The only one. We talked to candidates for state, as you'll see in a minute, state rep, state senate. We talked talked to all of them. Jeff Deal is the only one. Here's what he said. We both, and that's him and Leah, his running mate, we both believe in and reaffirm the need to protect human life wherever and whenever possible. We also reaffirm our concurrence with Governor Baker's veto of the so-called Roe Act. Now, what was the Roe Act? The Roe Act was this extreme pro-abortion measure that was pushed through by the legislature to make abortion on demand legal in Massachusetts up till the moment of birth and that children can go to their guidance counselor in school and go get an abortion without, the par- without their parents' knowledge or consent. That's what the Roe Act said. Let kids have abortions without their parents finding out about it and let the schools do it for them behind their parents' back and late-term abortions all the way up to the moment of birth. 
That's what the Roe Act said. So Jeff, uh, so Jeff Deal says he was happy that, uh, that the governor, Governor Baker, vetoed the Roe Act, uh, recognizing this as an extreme and radical move that, uh, that uh, moved too far uh, by state legislatures here in our state. So of all the candidates, there's three candidates for governor. We're going to talk about all three of them. Jeff Deal, Chris Doty, who was here last week or two weeks ago, and who also was donning the front page of the paper because he came, um, and Mara Healy. So that's where Jeff Steele stands. He's the only candidate who's pro-life. He's the only one who says, he's the only one who's not just thinking about the mother, right? Everyone else is thinking about the woman. Now, the, Jeff Deal's the only one who actually gave even a thought to the child, right? Because there's actually two people involved. It's not really your body. There's a body inside your body. So uh, you can tell, obviously, I'm pro-life. But if you're not, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. So that's where Jeff Deal stands. Chris Doty was here. And we didn't ask him the abortion question because the Roe v. Wade uh, news broke the day after he was here. So we uh, sent a quick email over to Holly, Holly Robichon, who I've known forever, going all the way back to like 1991, that's how old I am. Um, she's running his campaign. We reached out to them, and, um, and she gave us – let me just pull it up here. So, uh, so she, they gave us uh, – Chris Do- Doty gave us this – Quote, which I think he kind of squirming out of it, but we'll see. Uh, Chris Doty says, candidate for governor, Republican, we're already seeing the impact of abortion laws in some states. Patients are forced to leave behind children and jobs to travel thousands of miles. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I I want to make sure I get this right. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Chris Doty's quote is, the right to abortion is enshrined in the Massachusetts Constitution. We know that. We didn't really ask you that. We asked you what you were going to do. Here's what he said. "Uh, I'm running to focus... Uh, on making our state more affordable for our citizens and job creators. As governor, I will not seek any changes to our state's abortion laws. So he at least did answer the question, which is good. Uh, He started off with a fact that we already know, but that's okay um, for fellow space. But it seems as though Chris Doty really, it's not really important to him that he really is focused on other things. He's focused on the economy. He's focused on jobs. He's focusing on paying teachers more. He's focusing on the homeless and the addiction. And he is, because he's on the front page of the paper. We transcribed his, uh, his, his uh, interview from last week or two weeks ago. So you've got Jeff Deal, pro-life. You've got Chris Do- Doty, doesn't care. I think he pr- could probably go either way. He just wants to focus on other stuff. And then there's Maura Healy. Maura Healy is, if you want to talk about what is extreme and what is not extreme, you've got... Jeff Deal on the far right, right, for you guys who are at home. And you've got Chris Doty, I think, somewhere squarely in the middle. Here's Maura Healy all the way to the left of Bernie Sanders. She says, we are already seeing the impact of abortion bans in some states. Patients are forced to leave behind children and jobs to travel thousands of miles for ac- to access care if they can afford to. Overturning Roe poses a grave threat to public health, our economy, and our civil rights. She also said that she uh, supports the Roe Act. So she's all for abortion on demand up to third grade. She's all for um, your children getting an abortion by going to their guidance counselor at school without your your knowledge or your consent. And she's 100% in with the abortion industry. So if you're thinking of running for governor and, um, and abortion is a very important issue to you, this year you actually have a choice. Most years you don't. Most years, you've got like a pro-life guy running, but he's got no shot, right? Um, I'm trying to remember the name of that guy that ran five, years, uh, five or eight years ago who he got like five votes, right? Because he, he just ran on being pro-life. But this year, you've got a choice. You've got Jeff Deal, who I think at least has a small chance of winning, um, although, the, although the Donald Trump endorsement is just going to kill him. I mean, those commercials write themselves. They do. Uh, you, so you've got Jeff, Jeff Deal, pro-life, Chris Doty, in the middle, doesn't really care. Just kind of, kind of go with the, whatever the will of the people is. And you got Maura Healy who wants, you know, the right to kill a baby all the way up to the moment of, of consumption, uh, the moment of birth. Those are your governor candidates. Those are the people who are going to decide this issue after November when Charlie Baker leaves. Now, when the legislature pushed through the Roe Act, Charlie Baker, I was very surprised that he vetoed that bill because Charlie has done nothing but kiss the ass of the abortion industry since he got into office. And so maybe because he's not running for re-election, he was able to do that. 
Maybe that's the reason he's not running for re-election, because he did that. We don't know, because he doesn't come on the show anymore since he became governor. He was like a great friend until he became governor, and then all of a sudden, we don't see him anymore. Just a little too good for us. So those are your candidates for governor. So I did speak, uh, electronically at least with some candidates, with the candidates that are running locally. Tonight, I am going to be at Mama Juana's on South Union Street in Lawrence at 7 o'clock for Estella Reyes. Estella Reyes. She is a city councilor in Methuen. I'm sorry, in Lawrence. Hopefully, she'll be representing Methuen in the state rep seat. This is a brand new, newly carved district. It represents just Lawrence and Methuen. And it's a brand new district, so there's no, there's no incumbent in this race. I was a little surprised by this answer. I was surprised for two reasons, and I'll tell you after I give you her quote. Here's what Estella Reyes gave us on the abortion Roe v. Wade issue. While it is very difficult, while it is a very difficult personal issue, as I believe that legislation must be passed to protect the right to choose, and I will vote to facilitate a woman's rights to an abortion as a right in Massachusetts. But with all rights, there must be common sense reforms and restrictions at the state level. As a state representative, I will ensure to push for an amendment to the Roe Act to remove the provision allowing minors to get access to abortion without the consent of their parent or legal guardian. God bless her. Of all of the local candidates that we talked to, not one, all these, all these profiles in courage, not one would actually answer the question, what about restrictions? They all extolled the virtues of abortions. Abortions are wonderful. We love abortions. But not one of them would talk about would they restrict would they put restrictions on those laws? Would they stop the schools from taking your kid for an abortion without your consent? Are they against late-term abortions? Are they against abortion for sex selection or race selection or birth control? None of them answered that question except for Estella Ray. She's the only one that was brave enough to say publicly that while, yes, she supports abortion, yes, there need to be some restrictions. And by the way, that's where most Americans are. Most Americans are somewhere in the middle. Most Americans are not for abortion on demand up to the moment of birth. And most Americans are not for stopping all abortions for any reason. Those are the two extremes, all right? By the way, personally, I'm on, this, I'm on the other extreme. I, I'm, I'm against abortion for any reason. Not rape, not incest, not anything. But that's just my personal view. And I'm not running for anything, so you guys are all safe from me. So don't worry about it. You don't have to send me any hate mail. But I wanted to give, a, I wanted to give a, at least a, a kudos to... Um, Estella Reyes from being brave in Massachusetts by saying that she would support because you know the abortion industry is now going to target her. They're going to go. They're going to go after her hard, and they're going to support her opponent. Who, by the way, her opponent didn't even bother to answer. Didn't even bother to answer our emails. So he uh, either he doesn't care about abortion, or he actually just doesn't care what you think he thinks about abortion. State Senator Diana DiZaglio. State, State Senator Diane DeZaglio, she's running for auditor. I support her for auditor because she's going to be a great auditor. And auditors have nothing to do with abortion. But her stand on abortion is that abortion is a, quote, human right. Okay, I guess. It's a human right? It's a human right. That's where she stands. She's all in. She's, she's Maura Healy now. She's all in with the abortion industry. And I would venture to say she probably does not favor any kind of restrictions on abortion. And if she does, will not say so publicly. Uh, end of a state rep, Tram Wen. She says, we have a right to control our bodies. Oh, by the way, that picture of Diana Desagli that we ran a couple seconds ago, I don't know if you, if you still had it up. That's a picture we took at the bash like five or six years ago. And she's with the current state auditor, Suzanne Bump. And this is before Diane decided to run for auditor, so I thought that was a great picture. Trim Wen, she represents Andover. I think she also rep represents uh, Drake and Tewksbury. She says, we have the right to control our bodies. That's the message at the Boston, Boston Red Cloaks. She was at some event, Boston Red Cloaks. They're a pro-abortion group. And that's my firm belief. In Massachusetts, we have codified Roe into law, but we can't be complacent. We need to keep fighting here and across the country to protect our reproductive rights. So she's, she, again, with Mara Healy and with Danny DiZaglio, and who else did we mention already? Uh, at least with those two, she's all in with the abortion industry. And by the way, they give her tons of money. So that's, that's every single person who's, who's talking about women's rights in this story, they're all getting money from the abortion industry. Almost all of them. I don't think Pavel is, but we're going to get to him in a second. 
Here's Christina Minacucci, who such a disappointment as a state rep. She just really is. She's really, 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 really liberal. And we were kind of friends when she first got elected because the best she rep, she replaced Diana DeZaglia as the state rep. And Diana, her her number one thing was constituent services. If if a member of the press or somebody in her district emailed her or called her about an issue that they had, Diana DeZaglia would get back to them that day. Her replacement, Christina Minacucci, on the other hand, takes months to get back to people. I have at least 30 emails in my inbox from people who say, hey, I know you're friends with Christina. I've been trying to reach her for months. Do you think you can pass this information along to her? And I used to say yes until I couldn't reach her. And now I can't reach her for anything. She doesn't return phone calls. She doesn't return emails. And her excuse is she's just wicked busy. She's wicked, wicked important and wicked, wicked busy. So she just couldn't be bothered to get back to people, anybody. Uh, here's her quote. Let's see. Christina Minacucci. Sorry. Just got to get this up here. Uh, while last night's leaked draft doesn't come as a surprise, it still comes as a shock. Isn't that the same thing? Surprise and shock? Just me, maybe. While access to abortion is codified here in Mass, there's more work to be done. The time is now to stand in support of those across the country whose rights are being threatened. Your rights are being threatened. And she's going to be there to make sure that you have the right to kill your baby all the way up until the minute of birth. And she will. She's very, very pro-abortion. We had lunch probably about two summers ago, or maybe a summer, maybe a year and a half ago, when she was actually taking my calls. And the issue of partial birth abortion came up. She said, yes, she's all for it. Because it's just such a difficult decision for a woman to make. And you don't know the personal stories that we've heard. And as a side note, this is how the, op- this is how the state house operates. Whenever they want to do something that they know is really bad, they get a bunch of people to come in and tell sob stories and emotionally manipulate people and tell them like that one, that one case of that one person who needed a late-term abortion because she was going to die if she didn't get one. And that's what everybody focuses on, which is weird because if you talk about partial birth abortions to someone who's pro-abortion, they say, well, that's the exception to the rule. But then when they're talking about abortion, they always seem to go to rape and incest, which, by the way, is the exception to the rule. Like They don't want you talking about the exception to the rule when it goes against their belief, but then they only talk about the exception to the rule because if they came out and said, if Christina Minicucci came out and said abortions are I think abortion is a great way for, to, to handle birth control. Uh, most people will probably not like that. If Christina Minacucci came in and said, I'm for abortion on demand up until birth, and she said it like that, most people would probably be horrified by that. If she said, yeah, you want to kill your kid because, because you wanted a boy and you're getting a girl, so you're just going to terminate it and try again. If she said that, even though we know that's what she believes, if she said that, most people, I think, would be turned off. So what, what people in politics do is they redefine things. They come, up with, they come up with these phrases that sound not as bad so that you don't have the visceral knee-jerk reaction that you would have if they just came out and said, yeah, abortion until birth, sure, no problem. Because if they said that, that'd be a problem, right? She's running against a guy named Joe Finn who did not get back to us, and that was my fault. I sent it to the wrong email. But we will get a quote from Joe Finn. We'll have him on the show shortly. Uh, Una Ziegler. Another one, this really surprised me. And this really surprised me because Eunice Ziegler, she's a city councilor in Methuen. She is um, running for state senate. She's running to replace Diana DiZaglio because Diana DiZaglio is running for auditor. She says, and this really surprised me because she's a very religious person. So to, 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 to get this answer, I was, I was a little shocked. As a prospective senator, I will advocate to protect the reproductive and health rights and choices for women. By the way, that's a really long way of saying I'm for abortion. Like, they don't want to say I'm for abortion because it sounds bad. But that's really what she's saying. And let's just be honest. I love her to death. She's a great person. And she's, she really is a great person. She's helped TMF a lot with the homeless. But this, that's what she's saying. She's, she's using conf- purposely using confusing political terms to make it not sound so bad. And they all did this. I'm not just singling her out. And I'm going to give this to you again because this is a very long way of saying I'm for abortion. As a prospective senator, I will advocate to protect the reproductive and health rights and choices for women that are currently guaranteed in the Constitution. I get tired just reading that. 
That's a crazy sentence. As a writer, I read some of this stuff that politicians send me, and I just go, uh, do people buy this stuff? <laughs> like, really, right? Well, just come out and say it. She, she continues, if the Supreme Court chooses to roll back 50 years of privacy rights, I will advocate, I will advocate to ensure. She's not going to ensure it, but she's going to advocate to ensure those rights are protected legislatively in Massachusetts. <laughs> so I think what she's trying to say is, as a senator, she'll vote to make sure that abortion is legal. That's what she's trying to say, but she's not saying it. And if politicians would stop talking to impress other politicians and stop using words like women's reproductive health rights, don't just say abortion. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing healthy about an abortion. I know many women who've had them. There's nothing healthy about an abortion, not for the baby and not for the mother. It's not reproductive health rights. It's an abortion. Just call it what it is. Sorry to pick on you, Eunice. You know I love you. Um, and by the way, most people probably stand where you stand and not where I stand. So if you're getting mad at me for what I'm saying, trust me, it's actually probably helping you in Massachusetts because Massachusetts is a big pro-abortion state. Running against her is Pavel Payano. He is a at-large city councilor in Lawrence. This one surprised me also because the Dominicans in Lawrence, the vast majority of Lawrence voters are not for abortion. The vast majority of Dominicans are not for abortion. And those Dominicans in Lawrence, because that's like 80% of your electorate in Lawrence, the vast majority of, of, of Lawrence voters are not for abortion, and the ones who are are not for abortion on demand up to birth. They're just not. Shit, does that say nine minutes? I got 11 more to go to. All right, well, we're going to do the best we can, and then next week we'll finish. Uh, where was Pavel Payano? Payano told the Valley Patriot, until we know if there will be new federal rules and what they will be, Discussions on the topic are preliminary. No, they're actually kind of not. This is the best time to talk about it. And it will be impossible to determine what steps, if the, common, what steps the Commonwealth will take. Regardless, regardless, like all of our statewide leaders, I support a woman's right to choose. So I sent him a follow-up uh, question, which he ignored. They all ignored. Every single one of them sent me one of these kind of crappy answers. I'm for the woman's right to choose. I said, what about any restrictions? Do you support any restrictions? Totally ignored. Oh, I must not have gotten that text, Tom. Tom, it's Ripley's. Who could believe it? I didn't get that text. Eunice ignored my follow-up. Pavel ignored my follow-up. Everybody ignored my follow-up. Because none of them want to talk about restrictions because that's where the voters are divided. They want to go with, I'm for abortion. That's what they want to go for. Doris Rodriguez is a candidate for state senate in that race. Uh, she really has almost no shot because she's got no money. She still thinks she can win without the money, so we're letting her think that. Hopefully, she'll buy some more ads. She says, in regards to the potential overturn of Roe v. Wade, such decisions would put a woman's health, safety, and well-being at risk. First, no one should be able to tell a woman or anyone what to do with their body. Second, the abortion law goes beyond just abortion. It also involves many other issues, such as access to the same procedure and medications used for the safety, safe, safely to safely care for miscarriages. Miscarriages. These procedures personally saved my life. And lastly, as a mother of three beautiful girls, I remain pro-choice since I could never imagine having to carry a forced pregnancy for nine months, which would be physically and mentally dangerous. So now, had she allowed me to ask a follow-up question, I would say, okay, but that's for rape and incest. That's less than 1% of the abortions is rape and incest. How about all the other abortions? Women who abort their babies because it's a black baby. Women who abort their babies because they don't like that it's a boy and they wanted a girl or vice versa. Women that want to terminate their pregnancy because dad might get mad at them if he, if he finds out that she's pregnant. Birth control. How about late-term abortions? Are you okay with that? None of them really answered the question. So, because I care about you guys so much, I'm going to make sure that we do a follow-up for the next edition and we're going to ask them the restriction question. We're going to dive heavier into it. Okay, we do have one more, so that's good. We're good on time. For some reason, I thought we were a lot further up. Ryan Hamilton, he's running on a post, so it doesn't really matter what he thinks. No offense, Ryan. Um, we'd love to have him buy ads in the paper. We certainly want him to come on the show because he's going to be your state rep in Methuen. And I think he actually has a, he might have one or two precincts in Haverhill, but I, I might be wrong about that. Um, if any candidate, by the way, that's running for state rep or state senate can get me a friggin' map, please. The legislature has not released any maps, and we need a map. I, I need to know where everybody's district is so, like, you know, we can write stories about it. Here's what Ryan Hamilton said. Real profile and courage, Ryan, on this issue, especially being a guy. You can't be a guy in Massachusetts and be against abortion. They will kill you. So uh, this did not surprise me at all. He is a Democrat, and he is kind of a left-wing Democrat. 
Uh, he says, I'm disappointed to hear about the impending Roe versus Wade decision by the Supreme Court. I'm not running for office to control a woman or her body. Abortion is not a procedure someone should seek out, is not a procedure someone seeks out and typically talks about casually. For those women who have shared their stories with me, their decisions were not made with carelessness. Service in government needs to include empathy. I should have I should I shouldn't have to experience something to feel empathy directly. So uh, he free follows up. I'm grateful that Massachusetts worked these past few years to pass the Roe Act. So apparently he's for the Roe Act too. So there you go. He's a white guy. He's got it. He's, he almost has to be, right? Uh, otherwise, he'll suffer the same fate as Jeff Deal. He finishes up by saying, I will defend that act, women's access to care, and the right this country owes them to make their decisions for their own bodies. Okay, so it sounds as though he didn't really answer the question, but he kind of did, Right? He's, he's, he doesn't talk about any restrictions at all. So apparently, Ryan, does, Ryan Hamilton, all for abortion up to the minute of birth, and supports the Roe Act. So your kids, your, ten, your 12-year-old daughter, God forbid she ha- engages in some kind of sexual activity, ends up getting pregnant, she can go to her guidance counselor or her principal in her school and get an abortion without mom and dad knowing about it. Forget consent, they don't even know about it under the Roe Act. He's perfectly okay with that. He's okay with that. Marahio is okay with that. Diana DiZoglio is okay with that. Christina Minacucci is okay with that. And it kind of seems like Pavel Payano at least wants you to think he's okay with that. He didn't really address the issue, but it kind of seems that way. Estella Reyes is the only candidate locally that said, you know what, I'm for abortion, but we need to have some restrictions. It's kind of interesting. The same people who say that you have a right to free speech, but you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. There are restrictions on free speech. And the same people say, yes, you should be able to carry a gun, but there needs to be restrictions. If you get arrested for violence, you shouldn't have a gun. If you smoke marijuana, you shouldn't have a gun. If you're involved in domestic violence, you shouldn't have a gun. We should take your gun away because it's not an absolute right. Those are the same people saying abortion is an absolute right. Here's what's funny. Free speech is in the Constitution. The right to carry a gun is in the Constitution. They want restrictions on those rights. Abortion is nowhere in the Constitution. And they think that should be an absolute right. So if you're somewhere in the middle, here's my suggestion. If you're somewhere in the middle on this issue, you should write a $100 check to Estella Reyes for state representative for being the only fucking candidate who had the courage to tell you what she really thinks about her votes on restrictions on abortion. And she will get the shit kicked out of her for it. She will. And the abortion industry will go all in 100% with Jimmy McCarty, the guy running against her, even though she's the woman and was supposed to believe women and it's supposed to be the year of the woman and was supposed to elect women, but I guarantee you they're going to go all in with the other guy and he's a white guy from Methuen. And we don't even know where he stands on abortion because apparently he doesn't care what you think about abortion. He hasn't issued any, any press statements on it. So I hope that was interesting. I hope that was entertaining. I can't believe we actually finished that early. I thought we were going to be way late on this. Uh, But we were able to squeeze this into the 40 minutes. Um, Again, forget that I'm pro-life because it doesn't matter. I'm not running for anything. It's just my perspective. I honestly don't believe that we should be punishing babies because of the circumstances of their their, uh, conception. Right? That's just my view. And if abortion was on the ballot, I'd be voting against it. By the way, it's not my number one issue, though. I have supported pro-abortion candidates. Uh, Suzanne Bump for state, for state auditor. I supported her, and people said, Jesus, Tom, she's for abortion up to birth. How can you support her? Because she's running for auditor. She's, she's not going to have anything to do with abortions. She's going to be auditing. And that's what Diana is doing, so I'm going to continue. I supported Katie Ives when she ran for state senate, even though she was all for abortion up to birth. Because abortion wasn't an issue back then. Nobody cared, and the legislature wasn't going to have a say. It was Roe versus Wade was the law of the land. But now it's not going to be, and now it is going to make a difference. And so those of you who are in the middle, who are not completely pro-life and are completely pro-abortion up to birth, you should be writing a check to Estella Reyes, find her online, find her on Facebook, come to her fundraiser tonight, and you should be writing her a check, not because you agree with where she stands, but because she had the courage in Massachusetts to say it out loud. And in Massachusetts, that's not allowed. If Ryan Hamilton really was pro-life, you'd never know it. He would never say it publicly because he's a white guy running in Massachusetts. 
and he would never get elected if he did. Just watch what happens to Jeff Dio. Just watch. The, the vast majority of people in Massachusetts are pro-abortion. But the vast majority of people in, abor- in, in Massachusetts are also for some restrictions. And I think that's where the dishonesty in the debate happens. So I want to thank our sponsors. I guess we can roll up Melvin Taylor. I think this is a very, I hope this was a very educational show for you guys. I am going to continue on this topic. Um, maybe not next week. We'll see what happens. But in subsequent weeks, we're going to come in with candidates and we're going to ask them what they think about restrictions on abortion. Not, not are you for it or against it, because we know everyone's going to pander and say they're for it, except for Jeff Deal. We want to know where do you stand on the restrictions? Because if you're okay with abortion up until birth, I think, I think there's something very sick about that. I think you're a sick human being if you're for that. And if you justify it by saying, well, extreme cases, that it, that's all you're doing is justifying it in your head. I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, if we have any left after today's show, McLennan Real Estate Century 21, AFC Urgent Care, uh, Mark St. and AFC Urgent Care, Mark St. and Sun Construction, EIS, Gun Training and Investigations, Borelli's Deli, where I'm going right after the show, Tomo and Shaken Seafood. Let's see, who else do we have? Uh, 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 Lazy River Products and Drake It, which I will be this week. And a free shout out to Sebastian Tulsa Toys and Havel. Chrissy, thank you for today's show. Appreciate it. Melvin Taylor said go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.